All right, here comes video number two. Um, all right, I'm gonna show you uh, chromatography right now. Uh, there are several different ways that you can separate solutions. And the AP test does like to address those. Um, for solid solutes in liquid solvents, um, the way that you can uh, usually separate them is either filtration or evaporation. So like, you know that if you have, like if I leave one of our containers of salt water just sitting in the room um, for the next few weeks, eventually all the water will evaporate out and the salt will be left in the solution uh, or in the beaker, okay? So that's evaporation, right? Um, other times you like in the lab and we'll do a lab where you do this, like you actually filter your solution through um, a funnel with filter paper and the filter paper, like the size of the holes in the filter paper are such that the solute particles can't fit into those openings, but the liquid solvent can soak through and get filtered out. So then you can collect your solvent in the filter paper, which we will do, um, or your solute in the filter paper while, you're, while your solvent goes through. So that's for solid solutes. For liquid solutes, it gets a little bit trickier, okay? And one of the techniques for liquid solute um, in a liquid solvent is chromatography. Now you guys, you can see, this is not a very fancy setup. In fact, if you wanna do this at home, you easily could. Like if you have a white coffee filter, um, you can just cut it in strips. I would use the cone filters, not the basket filters because the cone filters are a little bit thicker. Um, you, use white, not the brown ones, um, but you could cut a little strip. Like that's all I did was I took a circular piece of um, filter paper, I'll show you, um, and I just cut strips out of it, okay? And then I have a paper clip on a pencil so that this is dangling in my beaker, but at home you could like easily use a cup, okay? What I have here is water, and I'm gonna pour just enough water. I don't want it to hit my paper. I'm gonna pour just enough water in here that when I put my paper in, and you can adjust it both at the clip and um, at, or you could pour in more water. I want my paper to just have the very bottom edge of my paper hit that water initially, but I don't want my marker dot to be in the water. Okay, so you can see that corner is in and now the water is like starting to wick up the paper. That dot was made with this black Crayola marker. Okay, I'm gonna set this one aside. This lab takes a little while, so we're gonna do the other ones while we go. All right, here I have a blue Sharpie. Okay, we're gonna do the same setup here. I'm gonna pour a little water in. Again, you don't want the dot to get wet in the beginning. You just want the bottom of the paper to be in the water so that the um, water will wick up the filter, meaning it'll travel. And that's what chromatography is. It's liquid solvents traveling across a surface. In this case, the surface is paper. Okay, and so um, I made this piece of filter paper pretty short, so I need a decent amount of water. Um, so what'll happen here, oh, still not there. Um, am I there? Oh, just barely with my pencil along. There we go. Okay. Um, so we're setting this up so that the water will travel across the filter paper. Okay, so remember that was my blue Sharpie. I'm gonna move these over so that you can see. And then um, I'm gonna need more water, give me a sec. Okay, and then over here, we have another black dot, but this time made with a crazy art marker. So a different brand than Crayola, which I thought would be interesting, okay? 
So pouring my water in there, that was actually close. All right, so uh, this is not like the most fun lab in the world to watch, but we will, you can see in this one, the Crayola marker, um, you, I'll do a little close up. But you can see that we're starting to see the presence of like a bluish green at the top. If you look even closer, there's like a little bit of a reddish color at the bottom. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking to see if colors separate out. I purposely chose black because black is um, a color that's made by combining other colors. All right, so if you, and so I think it's cool to see like, well, here are two different brands, exactly what color inks are they combining to make that black marker, okay? And what chromatography does is it separates out the different substances in that liquid by having them travel across um, the different solutes but because they travel at different speeds, okay? And so the reason we're gonna start to see the different colors is because there's more than one solute in this mixture, meaning there's more than one color. And uh, those colors are gonna travel across the paper at different speeds based on their specific chemical makeup, okay? Um, and so that's where you can really separate out to see what's in them. Um, Again, if you wanna do this at home, it, it's so easy. Just, I would grab like a couple different markers uh, or even like an ink pen. Don't use a ballpoint pen, um, that those don't work well. You need something with like pretty liquidy ink, okay? Um, I also wanna point out to you, like you can see on both of these, and I'm gonna move this one over a little bit. Um, you can see on both of these that this black is starting to spread out. This black is starting to spread out. This blue dot hasn't done anything, okay? Uh, take a minute and think about why that might be. And again, I'm gonna point out, here are the markers I used for the black, okay? Two markers we might give kids. Here's a Sharpie, a permanent marker Sharpie. So why might our blue dot not be moving at all, but our black dots are, okay? Pause the video, take a minute to think about that answer for yourself. And then um, I will explain, okay? All right, hopefully you paused. Um, so if you thought about it, I use water in my beaker right? What do you know about water? What type of solvent is it? It's polar, okay? Uh, these markers, because we let kids use them, right? A lot of times, like this one in particular, says washable on here, because kids get marker all over the place. They get them on their clothes, they draw on the table, you know, like everything. The marker goes everywhere. So companies have learned like, hey, let's design markers that parents can like wash out of surfaces. And considering water is a universal solvent, that's a better, um, you want a water-based marker um, so that it's easier to clean it out, okay? Uh, on the other hand, a permanent marker, what makes it permanent? It's the fact that it can get wet and nothing's going to happen. Like you can't, wash it off very easily. It's not going to run, um, you know, like uh, if you spill some water on it, it's still going to be there. It's fine. Okay. Why? Because these are not water-based markers. These have different solvents. Okay. Must be a non-polar solvent. And that's why this dot isn't moving at all because we're using water to, um, move this across the paper and nothing's happening. So it doesn't care about a water solvent, okay? Because it must be not, like every component on the marker must be non-polar. Um, and that's why uh, it's not moving, okay? So there, you know, chromatography can be useful that way, all right? Uh, 
I'm not going to make this video last much longer, but I just want to show you, you can really start to see the different colors in these markers, okay? These are two very different blacks. So if you've ever used markers where you're like, oh, I don't like this black, but I like that black, and you've ever wondered like why the different blacks are, why the blacks are different between different companies, first of all, I would imagine that they're formulas for their colors are probably trademarked. So you can't make a color the exact same way somebody else makes it. So even though this marker has, like I can see red and yellow and green starting to come across, um, this black over here has much darker colors. Like there's definitely like an orange that I'm seeing. So that could be like yellow and red that's coming out but there's a much darker blue that's also emerging compared to the other one. So, um, you know, those, like that's why you see different colors and different blacks. Okay, lastly, the other type of, uh, the other way to separate a solution that comes up sometimes on the AP test is called distillation, okay? And distillation is a way to separate, um, again, two liquids, but you're doing it by boiling points. So let's say you have two liquids combined. One has a higher boiling point than the other. What you can do is boil your solution so that the, solu the substance with the lower boiling point boils off first, like that'll vaporize first. And what you do, and I'll post a picture of this, is you attach this tube called a condenser to collect that vapor. And then you hook that condenser up to a different container, okay? And so what happens is um, you trap the vapor of that first substance, you recondense it using a device called the condenser, which if you've ever seen a movie like stranded on a desert island type movies, like they actually do this to change uh, like salt water into pure water because you can boil the water off and leave the salt behind and you can use like a huge leaf or something to trap, you know, you have to be creative about how to set up your device. But uh, there's nothing special about the condenser other than it just traps the substance. Um, and then it recondenses, and as it recondenses, like you usually have it on a slant so that as it recondenses, gravity takes over and it starts to drip out and you collect it in another container. And so by doing that, you have your substance with the higher boiling point still over here in your original container, while your substance with the lower <laughs> boiling point got separated out um, and is over here in this new container. Okay, so I will post a picture of that, but those are the major separation techniques that they like to um, address on the AP exam.